Yes, good morning, California. How are you? It's good to see everybody. One of the best, best and brightest delegations in this whole convention. It's great to be here with family and friends. And just, weren't you inspired last night? I mean, wasn't that spectacular? It put it in perspective. So now we have our, uh, our plan of action. We know how to articulate, or we will become more familiar with what uh, we need to go out and, and resoundingly get our folks in California and other places fired up, right? We got to get ourselves fired up. And we've got to make sure, we got to make sure that we don't forget why we're here and why we do this and why we're Democrats. And I know some of you have been around for about as long or even longer than me working on these issues. But let's not forget, by the time that President Barack Obama took office, and we were already in 2009, by the spring of that, of that year, we had already lost about 8.5 million jobs, the worst of the worst. This was the Great Recession. Short of a depression, had the President not worked to get that Recovery Act in place. And recall that we didn't have a lot of support on the other side. You didn't have more than five votes in the Senate to get that through. And the cost for that recovery, we're still, we're still reaping the benefits of that. That meant that we could postpone at least seeing another million people lose their livelihoods or be thrown out of their homes and not uh, have to suffer without being able to get unemployment insurance. Millions of people, as a result, kept in that safety net, were able to pay their bills and stay in their homes and continue to look for work. And that wasn't something that Republicans supported. They think that UI benefits, get this, is, like a, is, is something that is like an entitlement program. It's not. You have to pay in quarters to receive unemployment insurance. And your employers pay some of it, but it's all a bargain. We work together on it. Somehow, the Republicans think that that's wrong. Well, we were able to get that extended in many ways. And California needed it because we have a very, very large population. And thank goodness we were able to keep at least a million people at work, too. And because of that, we would have had more hemorrhaging and more loss. 750,000 jobs in the first few months of this administration that happened that happened under the other guy's watch. They allowed that to happen, kind of wiped their hands and said, now it's your mess, you clean it up. Well, the president said, it's not a mess, it's people. And it's helping people get back on their feet and respecting them. So we got to work right away. We got to work right away. And now, keep this figure in your head, folks. When you go out and people say, well, gee, you know, we haven't created enough jobs quickly. This is one of the fastest recoveries in a recessionary time that we've ever seen in the last two decades. This has been faster than the 1990s and in the year 2000 overall. And what I want to say is that in 29 months, keep that number in your head, 29 months, not three years, 29 months, 4.5 million private sector jobs. We lost 8.5, now we're at 4.5, with no, or very, no, I don't want to say no, but very little votes from the Republican side. So who's been carrying this? The administration and our good members of the House and the Senate and people from this great state and people like yourself who know that folks that lost their job, it was no fault of their own that they lost their jobs. There were bad policies in place. Now we want to close those loopholes. We want to make sure that everybody pays their fair share. Enough, enough about, well, we've got to just somehow close the deficit and cut everything out. And that's going to make everything fine because now the wealthy folks are going to spend money and it's going to trickle down to us. Well, it's. It's very true and clear. It doesn't trickle down to you and us. It doesn't trickle down to people that make less than 250,000. And that's about 95% of the population. That's why the president passed ERA, 
the Recovery Act so that people could get tax breaks and they could keep at least $1,000 three times to be able to spend money, to be able to pay the bills, and to do what they needed to do. And we're going to continue that. That's why the President is fighting so hard right now to close those loopholes. And so let's be very clear about whose side we are on. We're on the side of the people that have suffered the most, the middle class, working class people, vulnerable populations, displaced veterans, displaced workers across the state and this country. That's what this fight is about making sure that we stand tall for the values and principles that we know is what makes our country great. So 4.5 million private sector jobs created. We've already seen more jobs added across the board. And I can say a little bit about that because every month you might hear me talking about or you have heard me speak about the unemployment and where jobs are being created. Sectors that we need to continue to make investments in, and we're doing it because we're plowing down money right now in our community colleges, working in partnership with businesses and saying, we want the curriculum to reflect what the real jobs are about so employers don't have an excuse not to hire people. Because it's true, every single day there's about three million jobs out there that are not filled. But we need people to be trained and fully skilled and prepared for that. It doesn't mean a four-year, a six-year degree. It means technical skills, six months, 12 months, two years. And the, and the president is saying, we're going to make an investment. Right now, there's $2 billion that have been set aside for trade adjustment assistance for community colleges and partnerships to build out capacity. That's going to help empower a lot of our people who can't afford to go necessarily to the four-year universities, but can at least get their foot in the door and start to get that footing and the basic foundation of education and skills training. And we're using apprenticeship programs, our friends in labor. We're using nonprofits. We're using community-based organizations. We're saying, let's expand the pool. Let's go to those communities that have never had a shot at getting any of these grants. And we're making it competitive and transparent because we know we don't have a lot of money to spread around, but we're going to do it strategically. So we're going to push ahead on renewable energy. We're going to push ahead on health care because health care, believe it or not, in my opinion, is recession proof. Every single month since this president took office, We've seen an increase in health care. Believe it or not, we have. We've added jobs. And it isn't jo just up at the top level. It's at inpatient. It's in-home health care. It's what they call ambulatory services. That's the upfront person. So people can get jobs. That's a no-brainer. And what about the investment in the automobile industry? 250,000 jobs alone already created, and there's more that we have not yet been able to record. But about a million other jobs that are tied into that industry, and that's manufacturing, has been able to come back. And we're going to see more of that because our product is competitive. We can compete with our competitors from overseas. We can sell these vehicles. We can create lithium batteries. We can go towards creating a better product that's marketable. And that's what the president wants. In part, make it here, sell it abroad, sell it to our friends, expand the pool, and allow for that workforce to have dignity, respect, and good paying jobs. United Auto Workers and all the folks that are tied into that. And we need to continue those investments. So that's good because we've already seen also, as a matter of fact, since the 1990s, 500,000 jobs created in manufacturing alone. So don't believe for a minute when people say that America doesn't make anything because that is not true. Manufacturing jobs have grown by 500,000. 500,000 people are in that industry that folks in the last decade wrote off and said, we're going to ship those jobs to other countries. Well, this president is saying, we're going to insource, we're going to give tax credits to companies who bring people back here, and we're going to create those products and give R&D, research and development, and we're going to reward innovation here. And furthermore, we're going to allow for young people, the dreamers, and people that go to our universities to give them a chance to stay here and to create those industries 
instead of competing with us from other countries to build those companies and corporations here. Isn't that great? That is what we need. We don't need to be educating everybody and then sending them out to compete with us. So the president wants that to happen. We've got to do more on immigration reform. California knows it well, and I think it's finally taking, it's finally taken hold. Because all of us win when we can bring people out of the shadows, they pay taxes, they get in the back of the line, no criminal background. We have much more at stake when we're all pulling together and when we're not shortchanging our workforce. So a lot of good things are going are to continue to happen under this administration. But four years is just the down payment. We need four more years. So please help us continue to work towards a better tomorrow. Let's move forward. Si se puede. And yes, we can. God bless you and God bless the great state of California and all of the delegates. Let's get fired up. Thank you. God bless you.